The last five seconds are the most important. Boom! Good evening, everyone. Be having a good Tuesday. So I've put up what we're going to be looking at this week. We got live hand of the week. Two concept of the week: maximizing fold equity with Ace King. Three video analysis from someone called Hero Gora. And four live stream cash game action on Party Poker live. Well, sort of live on a three minute delay, which I'm bang on time for this week. So, props for that. Uh, also, if you do want to send a video in, just look at the information here. Upload it to YouTube, you can always delete it later. And then just send me the link, Joey Craig Poker at hotmail.com. Okay, so first, let's look at the live hand of the week. So this was, uh, it's in dollars on the on the video, but it's actually one pound, two pound cash game. So what's been happening at this table is I've been very active. Uh, I've taken down quite a few pots in the last couple of orbits. Um, this person here, who I've labelled Och Lady, that's old Chinese lady, uh, and Och Man, <laughs> you could probably guess is old Chinese man. The other people don't matter; they're just uh, random seats. So, uh, I've been trying to isolate the uh, Chinese lady, and she's starting to complain. Been talking to the Chinese man in Chinese. I don't know what she's saying, but she looks angry, and she's looking at me. So. Basically, I've been, they've been limping, I've been making it like 15, 17 to go, uh, just trying to give them a decision as to whether they want to continue with their hand or not, and try and get it heads up, get the others to fold and isolate them. So let's see what happens. So Chinese lady limps, Chinese old man limps. I make it 20 this time, I figure I may as well, because I feel like they're going to be limping a stronger range as they're expecting me to raise now, right? So, uh, <laughs> I, I'm expecting them to start cooling as they're expecting it. So, let's see. The action goes around all the other players fold. You can see I'm quite deep with the Chinese man at this point. So... The Chinese lady folds, uh, complains again, and the Chinese man calls. Now I think there's an interesting dynamic there where he may be calling out of honour for defending the Chinese lady. Um, don't know about that, <laughs> but uh, let's see what happens. Go to the flop. So this is awesome. We've got a crazy, crazy image. We've hit top set on a drawy board and we're going to have no believers. So he checks to us. Now, I might have made a small mistake on this flop because if we're not going to get believed very often and we got this image, we should be betting uh, a bit more. I think I'd usually go about 35 here, but I reckon I should have put like 40 or maybe, yeah, about 40. And I think I'm in it somewhere around there, like 37. Uh, he thinks for a little bit and calls. Turn is a jack which it sort of looks like a bad card but really it's an amazing card there's two flush draws on the board now uh, we can get so much so much value out of his pair and flush draws and pair and straight draws that we can really start hammering it and things like queen 10 and jack 10 are really in this guy's range so what i decide to do is over bet the pot because I feel he's going to be on more draws and I need to get value from him as much value as possible before the river bricks so now usually I'd be without this dynamic I'd be betting about a hundred or so uh, so I over bet the pot in this instance he checks to me make it 225 so this really looks like I'm trying to get him to fold and get rid of his hand so I'm a little surprised when this happens 
and he rips it in. I mean, honestly, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm never folding it, I could still be winning. He might be doing this with Queen Jack, right? And he might just be doing it because he's annoyed. Uh, so cool, but it's still a little bit surprising, like, ugh, we got top set, we might still be winning. And he's actually got the, uh, the nuts with the draw to the super nuts. So we still have outs, right? We can still be okay on this. Uh, we're just really hoping the board pairs because it's a pretty big pot right now. It's like all the stars had aligned and now this has happened. So it's gone in. And then on the river, the river bricks. It's like a six and he scoops the pot. So yeah, wasn't great. <laughs> What well, wasn't a great runner in the end, but uh, it just shows you that you really need to go for the the maximum value when you think when you have an image like this and you feel like you're gonna get paid off. Okay, so that was live hand of the week. So concept of the week this week was uh, maximizing fold equity with ace king. So this is a way of playing uh, when we got ace-king against players who are usually live live players. Uh, so that's the adjustments that we're going to be making looking at these, these ace-king plays. It's a concept that will make us money when we're winning, but when we're chopping or losing we also give them a chance to make a big mistake against us. Okay. So here's the common scenario we find ourselves in. We've identified a suitable situation to commit ace-king, all-in, pre-flop or post-flop. This allows us to apply a special strategy to increase our win rate when our opponent is unaware of pot commitment strategy. This is mostly true in live games and low-stakes online games. If we get the opportunity to get a third of our effective stacks in before the flop, and we suspect our opponent is unaware of pot commitment theory, we should always take that option unless it would make our re-raise too big. By doing this, we are left with one pot size bet on the flop. So if we put a third of our stack in, we are basically left with one pot size bet by shoving the rest of our stack. We must shove every time regardless of the board. This gives us our opponent two chances to fold their equity against us. So let's imagine a scenario. So 1-2 live game, we got ace-king in the big blind, middle position, a loose player with 75 pounds, effective stack, has just made a raise to 10, that's a pretty normal raise in a 1-2 game. Everyone else has folded and it's our turn to act. We already know that we're committing this hand versus this opponent. We got many options available to us that are plus EV, but as poker players, we need to decide what the most EV play is if we want to be the best. So they got 75 behind in total. Here's a list of the options we have. We knew to we know that to theory, uh, if we ever get in 25% of our stack pre-flop, we can never fold before the flop due to our odds unless they have pocket aces. Uh, <laughs> basically, unless we have an amazing read on them and we've put 25% of our stack in, we're never folding. But most people don't realize that they are committed if they do that. So here's our options. We can simply shove all in for the 75 pounds. Uh, we, and, I'll, and I'll break down uh, how all of these work and their pros and cons in a moment. We can min raise to 18 and play post flop out of position in a 37 pound pot with 57 pound behind to bet. We re raise 50% of our stack, so that's 38, and then shove every flop if they flat pre flop. 
we flat call the raise and play post flop we raise 30 35 percent of our effective stacks that's about a third of it leaving us with a pot size bet to shove all the flops option one shoving all in so if they open to 10 and we just ship it in we are going to get called by all their good hands basically the hands they're going to want to go with uh, so that's their medium pocket pairs some small players ace king perhaps ace queen ace jack and ace king sorry ace jack and king queen may fold or call depending on the opponent and how they're feeling but we're always going to get called by queens kings and aces this option does not maximize our fold equity and it allows our opponent to play the most perfectly against us that's bad for us if they can play perfectly against us by the way option two min raise and play post flop out of position we end up out of our position out of position when our opponent calls preflop leaving us with a very awkward stack to pot ratio we can get all the money in over one or two streets two streets if we do really small bets if we do not hit our pair and shove it it allows our opponent to play perfectly against us calling when they're ahead or if they have hit their pair against our ace high hand this makes it difficult for us to play again so option one and two hmm not even sure what's better out of that probably option one's better option three re-raise 50% of our stack, effective stack so put in 50% of the bets we can make and then shove every flop if they flat this really puts pressure on our opponent to decide pre-flop whether or not they're going to go all the way with their hand or not opponents in live games rarely fold post-flop and low stakes online games if they ever have 50% of their stack in the middle pre-flop when this happens it's often a trap I see this move a lot from recreational players, especially in live games. It's not the optimal move for fold equity and creates less dead money. Option 4 is to flat call the raise and play post flop. So this is playing our hand far too weak, ace king is one of the best hands and it puts us in really awkward situations with ace high post flop out of position when we miss but are probably still winning with our relative hand set high in strength it's difficult for us to play and weak tight the only time i may see this option being okay is if we know if we're actually in the small blind and the big blind has been re-raising a lot and squeezing that's a good time to try and trap them uh, but when we're in the big blind and flattings it's just too weak so option 5, this is my favourite, this is the best one. Re-raise 30% of our effective stacks, leaving us with a pot size bet. And then we don't even look, I mean we, we pretend we look at the flop, but we're putting all the money in. No matter what happens, it's a really big mistake if we don't do that. We have to put all our money in. This gives our hand maximum flop fold equity versus weaker opponents. Because they feel that they have to call the small free bet pre-flop. And when they miss the flop two out of three times, they're going to find it really hard to cool off the rest of their stack for a pot size bet for all their money with ace high or even second or third pair to the board. If they've just called us pre-flop, they're not going to be totally happy with it, so they would have just put it in if they wanted to. Uh, again, I've put a note there, although we are shoving all the flops, we never put our chips over the line blind before the flop comes down as this will reduce our overall fold equity. Uh, so we don't, we don't want to be doing that because people do that with hands like aces and, well, usually kings, so they don't get scared if an ace comes on the flop and they just want to put it in. So let's look at some ranges for our opponents to have an option five to show its effectiveness in action. So I've put down 12 hands that would think about flatting a raise pre-flop a re-raise free pre-flop from us so we've got some pairs in there we've got nines ace queen king queen jack jack queen queen ace king as well king jack threes ace ten pocket tens six seven jack queen because the stack to pot ratio is so small there are going to be 
some uh, suited combinations of those hands, but I haven't actually put those put those in. Um, it's going to be essentially the same. I mean, if they got jack queen suited, they might call. If they got ten jack suited, they may call. So, on some random boards, uh, let's look at this one first. This uh, ace ten eight board here. I'd imagine that about half of these hands will be happy to put the rest of their stack in after the flop, and half will fold. On a queen queen four board, about seven of these ones will call, and about five will fold. On lower boards, like a, a two six nine, I think about four of these hands will call, will uh, yeah call, and the rest will fold. And on a king eight five board, one high card, two low cards. Uh, four will play and the rest will fold. So it's really going to put them to tough spots post flop. Even when they're winning, like say they have pocket tens on that king eight five board, they've only flattered our raise pre flop. Are they gonna instantly call it in? I mean, they're not gonna feel great about it, right? So it maximizes our fold equity there. The real beauty of making this move is although we know we're already committed putting the money in on the flop once we put a third of our stack in our opponent will fold will still fold a certain amount of the time even if they did decide to call with 9-9 nine nine on a queen queen four board we still have a 27 percent chance about drawing them so in this instance it's really really small here <laughs> but uh say the board's queen queen four we got ace king and they decided to flat 9-9 nine nine pre flop because they weren't happy to get it in pre flop. We only need them to fold 6% of the time to break even. That's like 1 in 20. They're going to be folding this way more than 1 in 20 to us. They'll just be like, oh, he's obviously got aces and kings and ditch it. Now, let's look at this scenario. Imagine we both happen to have ace king. They didn't go all in pre-flop, they just flattered us. So if we both have Ace King on a low board like a 269 flop, if we jam first to act, our fold equity will be much, much higher versus a recreational player. This is basically free money that we would never would have won if we simply jammed in pre-flop. Chopping with our opponent's same hand, or racing with a hand like pocket seven seven. So we're basically denying them nearly half the cards. They only get to see three uh, instead of the whole five when they call all in. So that gives them two chances to fold there. This stop and go type move, I, I haven't really <laughs> given a concept to it. If, you, if you've got any concepts for it, please, please let me know. We can go with that. Uh, so it becomes more and more effective when our re-raise sizing to get in 33% of our stacks is quite small as our opponent's pre-flop flatting range will be wider and wider. So for example, if our effective stack is 40 pounds and our opponent opens to six, we free bet to 13 and then as the plan continues, we jam the flop for 27, uh, putting it all in on the flop compared to a situation where our effective stacks are like 150 quid, our opponent opens to 10, we free bet to 50 and then jam all flops for the pot size bet of 100. When the stack sizes are low, as in the first example, or if the villain's really weak, we can play ace-queen and ace-jack this way, maybe even ace-10, uh, like they are the ace-king hand in this instructional video. So. Yeah, with the smaller stacks, if, if they open to 6 and we make it 13, they're calling us with everything they open to 6 for. They're never folding, so we get so many more weaker hands in there, but when our stacks get bigger, they're going to be turning up with bigger and bigger hands. So we need to not use this move when we get really deep. It's fantastic to take down pots with ace-king on low boards when our opponent has ace-king too, and it's even better when we shove queen high flops and our exasperated opponent shows and folds jack jack or 10 10 face up to our jam. Uh, this happens a lot and you're going to be loving it when you see it. Be aware this move will only work against players who don't understand pot commitment theory pre-flop. 
Uh, most of them won't. Most players don't know that if you put in 25% of your stack pre-flop, you have to call the rest of the bet if money if the money goes all in. Uh, so this is true for recreational players and low stakes online players. Be careful though, because if we start putting a third of our stack in every time with Ace King preflop, better players will recognize what we're doing pretty quickly and adjust. Most importantly, please don't start free betting. Say we we got 300 big blinds, yeah. Please don't start free betting to 100 big blinds to get a third of our stack in and then shoving 200 big blinds in on the flop because when we start doing this, we're far too deep to manipulate our opponent's fold equity as they will be continuing with far stronger hands in their calling range. Remember, the shorter their stack, the better this works. Okay, so that was the concept of the week. I hope that makes sense. Yes, smashing the fish concept. Uh, that will be where most of the money comes from with our giant ace king four like hammer. Okay, so that's both of those gone through today. This next part is the video sent in from uh, Hero Gora. I believe he was in a video last week too. It's only a 10 minute video or so. Uh, and he would have watched the, uh, the ideas I gave him last week. So maybe he's changed his style a little bit. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what happens there. Okay, let's have a look. Oh, as always, I haven't seen these videos yet, so this will be in-game analysis of what's going on. So this called preflop, to a min rage you can pretty much defend everything, 9-7 certainly good enough to defend. Uh, a lot of the time I like to save money, not, well, save, just save every one time by ditching really uh, medium strength, sorry, medium to low strength hands, uh, defending them in the big blind, and I just want to get on with the next hand, because by the time it takes you to play out this hand, you could just have played a hand with much higher expected value rather than defending something for like a tiny, tiny one or two cents uh, of EV. So that's especially true in live games, by the way. Uh, let's see what happens post flop. Looks like we've hit something good here. Uh, I usually like to go for a check raise on boards like this with an outside open-ended straight draw as they're going to be continuation betting flops like this a lot. Let's see what he does. So he has gone for the check. Yeah, I rarely find a spot to donk into players uh, heads up out of position. That's usually for multi-way pots. Okay, so we've hit a 9 on the turn, there's 3 hearts. I really like a bet here. Uh, it's a bet to prevent them getting free equity from over cards. So there's going to be a lot of gut shots here. If they got a jack, they got an open ender. Um, yeah, we just need to be putting a bet in now because we don't want it to go check check. If, that, if it does go check check, then we've probably missed some value. You don't have to bet too much here. Probably go for about half the pot. Okay, so went check check again. Uh, I'm not sure if his plan was to check raise there or something, but um, it does look like we're good here. I think we should. We have a lot of showdown equity. Uh, I don't think our opponent's going to have anything a lot of the time. I do think that. If they were going to bluff at this pot, they probably would have done it by now. I reckon I'd go for about a third of the pot being in this specific spot and just try and get called by something like a very low pair. Maybe he's hit a five there. Let's see.
You'd think if the um, if the villain had any kind of hand he wanted to protect there, he would have bet it himself. Okay, so I wouldn't. I very rarely flat in a small blind. Uh, people do like to play these hands, like a queen eight, the sort of both medium high sort of cards, but you're gonna get squeezed a lot in the big blinds, so I very rarely have a flatting range here. I hope this is a fold, we'll see. Yep, that's correct. There's a zebra, a zebra, a zebra behind me, yes. Zebra or some sort of half burglar, that is correct. Don't worry, she's, she's allowed to be here. She's working hard. Authorized. She, yeah, she's authorised. <laughs> oh, what is she, this guy's just moving the video around. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> Alright, let's pop you back right there. Hero Gora. God, it's quite tricky to see the amounts there. I think you can just about make it out though. I don't really like this flat pre-flop. It's going to put us in a lot of awkward situations. Um, it looks like it's a defend. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, it's tough to play ace low after the flop. Um, it looks like we got a gut shot here, and I don't know whether he's going to go for a check raise. I think he was going to do that with the open-ended straight draw earlier, and I do think that this opponent will see bet this flop every time. So let's see what he does. I don't think I've seen this hero donk out in any pot yet. So he's bet he's bet the pot as well. So that's like massive. Uh, if we were playing this, who am land why? Who am land why? Who am I and why? Who and I am why? <laughs> Is his name. Uh, if we were playing him regularly and uh, seeing him potting on the flop and we get to showdown, we need to start seeing what sort of hands he's doing this with. Because if it's strong hands, then we just get out of there. Uh, and if it's weak hands, then we just start raising him. So our hero may have had the idea to check raise this, and this might put him off. It'll certainly put me off. Note that if we had one diamond on this board, it would be super sweet, because then we could get a potential backdoor flush as well. We've time banked. Yeah, so I think he was going to go for the raise there, but the pot size bet put him off. Yeah, almost. Almost a zebra. Yeah, next time someone sends in a video, please explain your screen name, because I don't know what Agora is. When I first saw it, I thought it was uh, the guy from Mortal Kombat again with all the arms, Goro. Okay, so Man Bear Pig has opened to 3x UTG. We've got aces, uh, so 100 big blinds deep. So we really like the free bit here. Uh, we want to go for a sizing of about one. Yeah, standard sizing of about one, maybe 110 sounds good. Let's see what he does. He played really well last week. I've gone to one, that looks great. So the reason that we free bet hands like this pre-flop um, 
more obviously because it's like the best hand <laughs> but uh, for this sizing it's good as well because it gets in 10% of our stack pre-flop and that allows us to easily get the money in post-flop if we min raise to something like 70 we're gonna have to start like potting the flop potting the turn and smashing the river to get all the money in whereas we can half pot when we make it 10% uh, of our stacks pre-flop and get the money in really comfortably so he has got a cold call in the small blind from an unknown player the only thing we know about this guy is that his name is Steve Steve K123 so it looks like we're gonna go three ways with aces the good thing about getting cold called in the small blind is his range is capped now. We know that he's very unlikely to have, well we block them, but unlikely to have aces, kings, or even really uh, ace king, uh, because pe people usually re-raise with those hands again, so we know he doesn't have a great hand. I mean the best, best hand he's gonna have here is something like jacks, 10 something like that uh so yeah what's good is because there's more dead money in there if we've been really active at the table the initial pre-flop raiser may want to just be start smashing it in uh now so he might be like well i have ace king i got i got kings i got queens here there's a quid in there this guy's cold called which means he doesn't have anything let's just ship it in now and then we're like boom we got him so how large a sample size would you say is needed before a HUD becomes useful in fast forward format? Uh, that's a really good question. So if it's things like free betting, you can get a good idea around a hundred hands you can get a really good idea around 200 hands and like a spot on idea after about 500 hands so the more the better if if they got a 20% free bet over 100 hands it might mean they're running good but it gives you a strong suggestion that they're being a lot more aggressive than they should be and then if it's still 20% at 200 you can be damn sure that they're getting out of line and then 500 is like they don't have anything they got way too many bluffs in there uh, four betting is when <laughs> four bettings when you need a much bigger sample size. So I wouldn't even really start paying attention to the four bet size. Maybe start having a sneaky peek at around 250. Starts getting there, and I mean just about starts getting there 500. But really a thousand is what you want for a good four betting stat before you start making some initial reads. Now, you gotta just go with what you got. So, if they're free betting like 50% and they played 10 hands, then you know you're shipping in your ace, your ace king and jacks there, are like no problem and loving it. Okay, good question. Thank you for that. It's, it's, it is like a zoo online sometimes as well. Absolute zoo. Okay, so we got a decent flop, look at that, a backdoor flush draw, excellent. And a pair, oh yeah, we still got a good pair. So, mm, the fact that there's a jack and a nine on there is a little bit annoying because those are the sorts of hands that, pocket nines and pocket jacks are the sorts of hands that these sneaky players may be cold cooling and cooling bets with uh, out of position rather than shipping in. But there's so much money in there, it's going to be very tough for us to get away from this. I think we should go for a two bet flat, sorry, a two bet um, move in this spot rather than spacing out over three streets. We can easily get the money in over two streets by betting like even like two dollars and then just jam in the river, no problem. Yeah, we're not folding this hand here once we get to this spot. We're never folding in free bet pots once we've got 10% of our stack in, unless we have an exceptional read that, when we have aces, 
when we have unless we have an exceptional read that our opponent has a set. Yes, some bosses can flat King King in the small blind. If that guy was really good and knew that Man Bear Pig was going to be 4 bet shipping hands like queens when you're 400 big blinds deep, then yeah, it's nice. It's nice to be flat and kings there and the aces, right? Yeah, so two dollars is what I was thinking. This two dollars is nice because when we put it in, uh, Steve's got eight left. Man Bear Pig's got nine. It looks like we can still fold, you know. If we start making it really big, like say we bet the pot, and then they ship all in, uh, it's only a little bit more for us to call. But two looks like we may still fold, so it gives us perceived fold equity even though we're never folding this all right so good luck i mean it's not a great flop but we gotta go with it uh the flat's good for us so that makes it look like this guy has spot on pocket queens what's man pig gonna do fold okay excellent diamond's fine I imagine if this guy had a flush draw, he would have check raised all in on the flop, and we have the nut blocker anyway, so it's all good. The four is also good because it's a low card to the board. I mean, we don't have any information on this guy. I mean, he might even have something really weird like King Jack here uh, and be fighting us because he can't fold hands like that <laughs> to free bets. Uh, so we shipped him, we're snapping this. And you know what? I think he's probably got queens. If he's a bit worse, he might have tens, but we'll see. And we still got flush draw, right? And we can still hit an ace, no problem. Look at that. King queen suited. Just because it's suited, he felt he had to call it. Great hands to review there. Um, again, try and remember that guy's name. Steve KG123, I think it was. Uh, <laughs> when we hit our pair, we are never folding post flop to that guy in free bet pots. So we've got a question here. Surely it would take a long time to achieve even a hundred plus hands in Zoom, because you'll only be playing with them every one and X amount of hands. And if you fast fold in early position, your HUD won't even record their actions if they are in later position, right? Ah, uh, if you fast fold fold in EP? That's a great question. Uh, I feel like you're correct and it won't record it, you know, if you fast folded it. Um, yeah, because you wouldn't see the later actions, so the HUD wouldn't. It does go on the hand history of the site, so I'm not sure exactly um, if it does record that or not. That's a really good question. But with Zoom, it's like you're playing four tables at a time. It really doesn't take a lot to build up those actions. Uh, so you, remember, you can play multiple players in the same pool on Zoom. So you can remember, uh, sorry, so you can build up a sample size really, really quick. And I mean, you're never going to have perfect information, but you should go with your, your reads. I mean, if a guy's playing like, 30, 35, 15, over 20 hands, you can be pretty sure he's a fish and pr proceed accordingly. Um, I don't want to confuse people too much with the HUD, HUD stat talk, but that is a really good question. I'm not sure exactly if it would record it. But basically, yeah, the, the bigger the sample, the more comfortable you are to make your moves. Yeah, so this hero is being really disciplined there, folding Queen Jack, that is definitely a fold. Now, just having that brief chat about HUD, so this guy's played 29, 29 hands, that's the blue. Um, if, I mean, I'm not sure exactly what this 
person's HUD stats are, but it looks standard, looks pretty standard to me to be VPIP PFR. So he's this opponent he's got in a small blind is playing 10% of hands and he's playing 10 here. Sorry, he, and he's raised all of those hands. This 4.0 I believe is going to be his free bet or his aggression factor, but that seems, yeah, pretty snug. I'd be a bit wary about this opponent. He has min raise, however. We don't know if he always does that with his whole range. So, yeah, let's see. I feel like if we free bet this hand and he four bets us, we're, we're not really loving it because he seems pretty snug with his stats. This is where having a really uh, bigger sample size would help. I feel like we should be flatting this rather than free betting it and take a slightly lower variance route saying that it is NL10 but <laughs> yeah, it's close. Let's see what he does. I wouldn't mind it either way. We just really don't want to get 4 bet here. Oh, thanks. So it looks like that question's been answered. Even if you fast forward, it does record every hand. It must be because it goes on the uh, hand history tracking. And he's folded. Uh, so perhaps that min raise m meant that he had a weaker range in that spot. That's something that we might want to look out for. Urban poker. Why are you so confident to get your whole stack in after betting 10% of your stack pre? Aren't you giving them good odds to hit set at 10%? Are you going to get paid enough with A if you lose your stack 1 in 10 times? Well, remember that if they hit their set, uh, yeah, it's around 1 in 10, I think it's, yeah. Let's, let's just say for argument's sake, it's, it's 1 in 10 and they stack us, we need to remember that they're going to have not just sets in there when they're check raising us or check calling us, they're going to be uh, putting in money with worse hands and bluffs too, so we have to be committing ourselves in those spots because we don't want to be missing out on the value and when they have a set, they have a set, it's fine. I mean. The alternative, if, if you're really worried about it, would be to raise, like, make really big raises pre-flop that don't give them the odds to hit their set. But then, remember, we're going to be bluffing a certain amount of the time, and if we're making it too big, we're just never going to get action with our aces. So you can never have a sure spot in poker. You have to go for it. You know, you have to have a bit of gamble. Uh, you saw that guy went mental with King Queen a minute ago. <laughs> Uh, floating us and then jamming a gut shot so yeah you can be pretty happy <laughs> with it even if they have hands like two pair it's you're still going to be able to outdraw them a decent amount of the time don't be too scared of sets uh, an important thing to note is that if we have ace king say we don't have pocket aces we've got ace king and then we hit our pair on the flop and then we're happy to go with it because we got an our 10 percent pre Remember that there's only two actual sets they can have on that board. So they can't have a set of aces or kings really. That's extremely unlikely. Um, so there's only going to be like a two or an eight on that board if we've hit our pair. When we have aces, there's going to be three cards that they can hit. Does that make sense? So when we hit our pair with ace king, they actually have a less percent chance of hitting their set because we've covered one of the cards already. One of the three cards is taken by us hitting. But with aces you got, yeah, it's a bit more likely that they will have a set. Don't mean to scare you guys. It's cool, 10% is fine. When you get deeper, that's when you need to start being a bit more careful. Ah, oh, thanks, my biggest fan. I had this friend at university called Urban, second name. I wonder, wonder if this could be him. This guy was wicked at computers, this, this Urban guy. So you know on the, on the keyboard, 
uh, across the top, it's got like QWERTY, UIOP. He actually pulled out the keys and put in uh, his, <laughs> he put in his own word at the top of the keyboard and he spelled out Urban Style because it was his name. I thought that was really cool. Obviously he has to remember what the keys are, but because he was good at computers anyway, he didn't have to look when he was typing. So it was fine. So we've raised here with King Queen and it looks like we're going to see bet this flop. It's pretty connected. Uh, yeah, I think we should, I think we should just hit that. We should, we should bet this flop, about half is fine. Even if he calls, then, even if he calls us, then we still got a 25% chance or so of hitting a king or queen on the turn. Because we know we're not just going to be bet, bet, betting on boards like this. We can bet, turn's going to go check, check, and then we get two chances to hit our card. It's a bit like having an open-ended uh, straight draw when you have two over cards to hit. Assuming he's got something like pocket eights, you know. Oh yeah, I love to gamble when I have aces. Don't worry about that. Also, by us bluffing on the flop, it stops them bluffing into us, potentially. Now this is like a definite fold. We can't really do anything here. Who's the girl? What girl? There's no girl in this video, this is poker. What are you talking about? Oh, you mean the zebra? <laughs> There's no girls in poker, come on guys. We you know this. Actually, a lot of girls play tournament poker. I've noticed now. Didn't didn't that lady win the um, the massive the massive event in Nottingham a few days ago? I think they're three times more likely to be seen in a in a tournament situation. Don't quote me on that fact, though. I don't think this hero is um, was raising this much from early position. It was something I suggested last week, so I really like it if they've taken it on board. 4x should be fine at things like 10nl, but it might start ringing alarm bells in people's heads, so I usually go for 3.5x, but I'd, I don't know if it matters that much at these stakes, guys. We've been called by a guy that looks like we want to get a lot of calls from. 3117 over 29 hands. This is the sort of thing I was saying earlier, like, this seems like we're going to be good here a lot against this guy. A half burglar or zebra, yes. Behind every great player is a great woman. Huh. <laughs> Yeah, so, so far the sample size is correct on that. Mm -hmm. So one of you guys are going to send me in a video next week, I assume, yeah? It's easy. There's this, uh, this uh, free software called EasyVid. Bang. Um, there's loads of stuff like that. It's just screen capture software. When you're playing, just um, just pop it up, and it will record it, and it can upload it to YouTube straight from there. Then send it to me in my email. Okay, so we've raised. We've got two. <laughs> we've got two uh, opponents in this hand. A uh, hundred big blind effective. We've hit middle pair, so I prefer taking a betting line here simply because we got 
uh, we seem to have information that this Ruf Rufus died? Rufus died. That could be a Final Fantasy VII thing. Uh, is going to have some draws and be a bit fishier than normal. Uh, so I think I like a bet, bet line here. It's pretty hard to win multi way pots when we start checking. Uh, I, don't, I don't think she's watching the stream on the laptop. <laughs> Do you ever get paranoid when playing online that someone is behind you watching through your window with binoculars or <laughs> still sitting on the sofa? Um, I usually do have the curtains, the curtains open <laughs> uh, with binoculars. Yeah, yeah, that would be tricky. Maybe I should start. Um, it's really funny. <laughs> start putting one of those screen shields on here so no one can see. I just, we're just never, le never leaving the house or opening the curtains. That'd be fine too. There's plenty of ways to get vitamin D. Let's see what the hero does here. So he's checked. It's going to be pretty tricky to win this one now. Um, I think we should definitely be betting something here. Let's go for about half the pot or so. Do you find that with fast forward people play a lot tighter? We're going to watch this hand and then I'll get back to that question. That is a great question. So it's gone check check again. I feel like we've missed out some value now. There was some draws to be had there and now he's put it into us. So this just looks like a fold. He's putting it into two people. Maybe this guy was going for a check raise at some point. Okay, so when I started playing fast fold, I was thinking, man, this is easy. I can fold like a hand a second so like every minute or every minute I'm gonna have aces or kings and then just get it in uh, like so even if you're playing it on your phone or something it's easy to play that way um, people don't defend their blinds as much I feel in fast fold I do I do get the feeling they play tighter yes but it doesn't mean that there's no money to be made I think even though the whole player pool plays tighter it's still better to play fast forward because you get so many more hands in so you just have maybe a slightly smaller edge than playing a regular table but you remember you're playing like four tables when you're playing one of these i think that's the equivalent about four times faster yeah so it's it's not always worth the battle to defend yeah The reason I think it's it's good for recreational players on fast fold is because it's really handy to play on uh, like phones and tablets because it's basically just one table and you're always in the action so you can do it like on the train or wherever or when like you're in a pub watching football with your friends just easy to, to play. Whereas if, if you're playing a regular table, you sort of got to pay a bit more attention, don't you? <laughs> to go rogue with marginal hands, I like that. Go rogue would be a good name. So we're in there, Rufus died again. Uh, I get... right. So this... I was going to say something bad's going to happen here. So this guy's playing seems to be playing a lot of hands. I don't think we should be opening 4-5 suited against players like this because they're going to defend way too often and it's going to be an uphill struggle. So I'd go for some more higher card hands. So I hope that makes sense. Against a random unknown, pretty much any two suited cards is fine to smash it up with, but I don't like raising to 2.5x preflop. I much prefer going a lot higher simply to get the hand over with and stop people defending. We just want to win the big blind, we don't want to play a pot against them, you know. We just want to win this quick and get on with the next hand. 
Uh, we've also been free bit here, so this is just like annoying. Let's fold. I don't know why he wants to call this. Is he gonna call this? Cause all right, don't do this. <laughs> so I get the feeling that our hero is calling this because he's identified that he's <laughs> he's uh, playing against someone who's gonna be making mistakes. But we have five high. We can wait for a better spot than this. Sure, if we open ace jack and he three bets us, we can be like, yeah, this guy might be going a bit crazy with ace ten hands here, uh, or suited aces. But four five is it's going to be really tough to win. And this suited connects the hands that you might need to make a few moves with post flop, and you don't want to be making moves against people who are going to be cooling you down with everything, okay? Uh, now that we're in this awful position, I... Yeah. <sighs> Depending on his bet size, if he's a massive, massive fear, she's probably going to make a bet sizing mistake here and bet further to part and we can call. If he bets half, maybe we can call, but we got gutsh and we really want to back the diamond, don't we? Yeah, this just looks like an awful spot. I feel like we have to call, call once though. And if we hit, are we even gonna stack him? Is he just doing this with his bluffs? We need to know if he's if he's value heavy here. So, if he's actually got some good hands here, say this was a tight player and he's done this, then we can be like, yeah, if we hit our gut shot, we're getting paid off because he's got he's got a hand here. He's got at least ace king, sorry, at least ace queen king's ace is better, and we can definitely stack him. But against this guy, is he just doing this with nothing? And if we hit, we're not getting paid. You need to think about that as well. Is there actually any implied odds here? Okay, so it looks like we're gonna go for the raise. <laughs> Alright, good luck, man. I mean, it, it could work, it could work. We'll find out if he's got anything right now. It's a strong play. Being called. Okay, now we've hit our diamond. It's awesome, because we can just shove this and be like, please fold and have pocket tens and be scared of the queen. Uh, we've also picked up a double gutter, it looks like, seven or a three, so that's like the, the best card in the deck that didn't give us a straight. So that raise on the flop gives us an excellent shoving uh, stack to pot ratio to shove now. So let's see what happens. Get a feeling he's definitely going to go for the shove here. And it looks like we're going to be okay. Uh, I don't know why he's, if he's thinking about betting less than a shove, but I think he should just go for it. Let's see. He's gone for the overshove, 22, and takes it down. Work it. Uh, yeah. Mm. This kind of move would be really good at higher stakes games. I get the feeling that we did this against the wrong sort of opponent, but I like what he's thinking. Mm -hmm. Nice hand, sir. So let's see what's going on in this chat for a sec. Blind vs blind scenarios come to mind. Mm hmm that's true. Yeah, so it takes time to build up a uh, useful HUD sample size. Yeah, it would take a very long time to be opening specifically player on player in certain spots. So you'd know that you know that from your own stats in the game how you're being perceived. So if you've been playing for an hour or two and you've noticed that your fold to steal or your fold to uh, late position raises is really high 
then you may be expecting people to steal from you more so you should be free betting a little bit more because you have that image um, you'll never really know but you just got to go with the information you have sometimes you've noticed uh, big blind five bets more in fast than in regular zoom so they five bet shove I imagine that is yes so they five bet more in fast than in regular. Uh, that would make more sense actually, because if you're playing the zoom game, then the four bet stat will condense and become more accurate faster. So your five bet shoves, uh, you'll be more confident doing them. Yeah, that's correct. I just love the concept that you're always in the action in these games, in the zoom ones, you know? So what kind of stakes do you guys play online when you're playing fast forward? Uh, do you think of it like if I'm playing 10 NL fast forward, it's a bit like playing a 50 NL table because it's four times faster? Uh, or if you're playing two of them, is it like you're playing two 50 NL tables? Uh, how do you guys think about that? My biggest cash in in a tournament, in a day, in a week? I don't play too many tournaments. Um, yeah, let me know. I know what my best week was. <laughs> That was a mix of tournament and cash games. Natius, does that Nat, Nat West had to open a new high street branch? Is that in the news now? Is that current events? So, uh... Our house. See, we're already recognising these names, so we've played this guy before. This is a guy who, when we had Ace Jack, he potted the river when it checked round twice, and the the fishier, perceived fishier player uh, was in the pot too. So now he's limped. Um, I do like isolating with this King Queen, as it's very rare that people will be limping better hands than King Queen here, and we're going to be dominating a lot of their limping range too. People like to limp things like Queen Jack, Jack 10, small suited connectors and pocket pairs. So we can really start taking the initiative by raising and betting. And I like going quite big here to discourage other people from calling behind. Um, if we make it like 3x now, then the button and blinds may come along, but we really want it to be heads up with hands like King Queen with high card hands. Heads up in position against the limper. Oh, so we just didn't we didn't even play that hand. Okay, yeah, we should we should play that king queen there, um, unless we had a really good read that there was going to be a lot of free betting squeezing action going on behind us, or we know this guy only limps when he raises bases and kings. It's going to take so many hands to get that information on people. So Amy, this trade played 25.50 mostly, and is that uh, the zoom? I think, I think that stake is uh, missing uh, on Party Poker. On this updated recently, they've done quite a few updates. I know they had 2 4 and that's changed. Yeah, I got a bracelet. Um, here, let me show you. So, this one was for uh, 6 max. I, I pretty much always play 6 max cash. Don't know if you can see it. So, that's. 2015 uh, yeah I like playing 6 max cash online 
so I played a uh, tournament there and won it. I actually final tabled the same tournament the next year, uh, so I think I came fourth in it the year after. So I was really happy with that. That is like my my game that one. Uh, that gave me one of these as well. Little gold thingy. It was one of the Apats, you know. So it's not very big buy-in ones. It's quite a big field though, yeah. Oh, and this is cool. So on there it's got, I don't know if you can see, six mechs. World Championship. Unfortunately it says amateur poker, but there was real money involved. Which is weird, because last time I went to a tournament, um, I got there to play, it was like a community event for something, and I thought we were playing for money, but I ended up taking home a teapot. Yeah, so that sucked. I didn't know I was playing for a teapot. I thought there was going to be a bit more action than that. And uh, yes, I have all, all of my awards just there, just on the side. <laughs> it gives me some confidence when I'm playing online, you know? So, so far, I'd say be careful who you're targeting in the small blind, big blind situations when you're calling free bets. Uh, so those hands are good to defend against people, good to defend against people who you know are capable of folding, but I think you should take the lower variance route. And you did hit like the gin turn card there to jam, so that was that was awesome. If you if you brick it and something there's no dime in there and like a jack comes or something like that, you just it doesn't look great. You know, it's a really tricky spot. Are you still gonna jam there or have you just lost your money on, on the flop rush? On the flop raise. Yeah, six max cash is my game. So Queen Eight, yep, yeah, I think that's in there. That's in the race. 5-7, if this folds around, we're definitely raising it. I like the 2.5x on the button. I haven't played party poker in a bit, but I typically play small stakes. Well... I only ever used to play on one site online because it, it had really good software but actually even in the last year Party Poker has brought has really updated its software so it's so good uh, in the last I think five or six months it's become excellent it's really good to play on and it's got a nice community feel to it too um, you can like add friends and there's achievements and there's like a reload bonuses every month so there's lots of uh, exciting things going on with it yes take that pot down <laughs> I went out to being bring home the bacon you got some bacon but came home with a teapot yes bacon's fine too <laughs> I think there's the tea bag in it, actually. Oh, yeah, apparently this is like a uh, twenty-year-old tea, so he said, "Don't, don't drink that." All right, Ace Four against Rufus died. So this is the guy that we've identified many times to be slightly suspicious. Um, I feel like we can defend Ace Four here. Mhm. Mm I don't think we need to be crazy free betting it or anything. Let's see what happens. 
and he's put it in. I don't really feel like defending this hand anymore. I think it's a fold, and I get the feeling that this hero may float though. Ah, oh, that was the end. We didn't even get to see. Didn't even get to see what happened there. <laughs> Ah, do you want to see his um his world record that he did? World record uh, on frigate gold knife. Yeah, check this out. So I mentioned this last week that he was a world record holder. So do you remember that game Goldeneye on the N64, yeah? So this guy was loving it. So a speed run is where you complete the level as fast as possible. So he's got, uh, the reason that he's looking at the floor, right, is because it takes longer for the computer to generate the graphics, you know? <laughs> um, to generate the graphics so the screen frame rate runs faster when you're looking down rather than looking up at the uh, like the computers and the sky and whatever's there uh, so he looks at the ground and also you might see he's moving diagonally so he's like strafing around because that means you move like 1.2 times faster than just moving forward yeah he told me all this it's very technical so basically it's just him going around, he's selecting like a mine here or something. Lobbing it over, that's like a perfect shot to blow up wherever it is. You might notice it's in uh, Chinese here. That's because the Chinese version runs at a slightly faster frame rate per second. And yeah, he's just basically strafing, looking at the floor. He might occasionally look up to shoot someone for instantly in the face. <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? Uh, sometimes when he's when he's playing a level, I notice that he runs straight straight uh, past people. So he doesn't even like he knows it's quicker to run past them than to kill them, as well. So he's worked all of that out. Mental, isn't it? So he's looking again straight into the floor. Quickly takes out this room. Goes in there. I think he's got to put a bomb. I don't really. I didn't have an N64, but I'm guessing you got to put a bomb on something to complete the level there. And then he's straight on the boat. Boom. World record. So a little bit of a old game intermission for you. Right, so. What are we going to play for the last hour or so? Yeah, there is no 2550. I don't know why that is. Hmm. So <clears throat> let's go with Should we play 5, 10, 10, 25? I'm only gonna play one table because I wanna explain some things to you when I'm playing. So let's do Try and build a stack on this one. All right. I like making uh, quite small raises in blind v blind so that they continue with their entire range. Oh, he's folded. Oh, that's great. Yeah, so like most people will raise it to four or five X there, but I really like making it small so they have to call. So in like a live game, if it's uh, one pound, two pound, and they limped, so there's four pound in the pot, two each, I might just put in a fiver because they're gonna continue with the whole range there. Uh, I'm gonna check this back and see a turn. If he bets, definitely gonna call. 
and I expect him to check back on Rivers quite a lot. I don't think we need to bet for protection very much, there's no value in betting this one. 810, perfect. Oh, need to hit the auto rebuy to max. Um, don't need that one there. Yeah, the party poker software has been awesome. Tree man, tree man. Uh, I usually go for 50, but I'm gonna give this guy a discount because I definitely want him to continue and he's short stacked and this might make him be, ah, uh, what the hell? It's only 30 more, let's do it. Bromaha, terrified of that game, man. Uh, let's try and get this in over two streets. So I'm gonna bet. 70 and then jam every turn and he may even check raise our sales would be pretty cool with his like 10 jack I need to be really careful that I don't time out when I'm explaining stuff cool yes yeah, so usually that would be a 5x raise there but we want him to continue with more hands and he's short stack so we give him a discount bro maha no bromo ho ma play plo 200 yeah they don't actually have a zoom version of that man no gamble no future that's true i've been playing uh higher stakes higher stakes than usual in live games um right yeah some people instantly free bet these jacks. They're like, hey, a good jack's got a free bet. Nah. Because we're going to get four bet a lot. And this will happen. So this guy's going to. Oh, that's annoying. All right. If he calls, that was an easy call. Let's have a quick look. What's he doing? This guy's got a really tight range. So I think this is a pretty. It's pretty close. Pretty close. It looks like he was only squeezing about 3%. That's pretty much the nuts here, which means that if he if he bets it, he's like, we're definitely stacking him. Uh, we are definitely calling one bet hit for that amount. Bing. 10 may slow him down. If he's got ace king, he may bet more because he's like, ah, oh, I got an extra out. And it's gone check, check. So I think we're pretty good here, you know? Uh, let me just think. If we bet, we're just getting owned, he's going to call ace and kings, he's not going to call, he hasn't got ace 10 or anything like that. I didn't see any value in betting, let's just check. Swish! Yeah, I, w I wasn't loving that. Wasn't loving that, to be honest. You thought HUD doesn't work in, in fast forward? So, in middle position, I like open him to 3x. Yeah, man, HUD works on party. I'm not a hard expert, so like uh, I don't know what ones it works on, what ones it doesn't, but yeah, it definitely works here on fast forward. And it definitely works on regular tables too. Let's get this guy cool. He looks like he wants to play a few hands. Uh um, hmm, that's a nasty surprise. Where's he from? He's from Greece. We're going to continue. The Russian Federation. All right, take it away. I feel like the Greek guys go a bit crazy sometimes, you know? These guys are folding loads to steals, so we're going to steal. Steal away. That's when the HUD comes in handy. That would usually not be a steal, by the way, but sometimes you just got to know when your people are gonna fold too much. Uh, we're not defending that. Uh, 
I eat your nuts. So this guy... I feel like if we free bet, he's just going to fold everything because he's... He seems to be folding a lot to free bets here. So there's better value in free betting weaker hands. I'm really surprised he bet this flop because that looks awful for him to bet. He's checked. So uh, is it better to bluff now or bluff forever? Let's check. And then bluff forever. Oh, there's a straight now anyway. So. Yeah, I was surprised he bet that. <laughs> I was so surprised he bet that flop. <laughs> There's going to be more value in that. And I'm really glad I didn't free bet now. <laughs> I usually play these guys are going to call and raise too much. I usually feel like um, my biggest weakness playing Zoom, because I usually play four tables of these, is that I very rarely take notes. So I don't really see any point in taking notes until you have at least 500. This guy's going to fold loads when I raise. I'm even going to give it a discount because I don't think he's going to defend that much. Usually make that 3.5. Um, yeah, my biggest leak is not taking notes because I'm playing so many tables but these guys here so this guy's got like 900 hands 1.1k uh, um, if we start noticing patterns they're the guys that we want to make notes on we don't want to start making notes on people who are you know, who we're never going to see again I mean what's the point it's just a waste of time yeah but I'll show you the kind of notes I, I take if we get a chance. Yes, Russian. We don't call free bets with ace eight suited from the cut of first big blind if they're Russian. This guy's free betting a lot from the big blind. Now it's only been 28 hands, but 16.7 is like a mental amount. Uh, I was gonna rip it in if he free bet. Now he's called, I think that he actually is gonna have some value. That's not a great flop for us, is it? Never mind, that's a bit annoying. Which poker players do you think are best cash? live and online players. I think Phil Negreanu is the best. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, Phil Negreanu. What, what a hero. The Canadian poker brat. Nice guy. Mm-hmm. Okay, so here's my take on that, is the best poker players are gonna- Jill Helmuth, <laughs> the best poker- is that his wife? Uh, the best poker players are gonna be the ones who are more comfortable playing deep stacked, which is going to be cash game players. So if you- well, this is an easy fold. If you ever- if you were to put like- someone who only plays cash games and then say okay play a hundred tournaments now like sit and goes or multi-table tournaments they are gonna fare way better in those tournaments than if you take a tournament player and then say okay play a hundred sessions of cash games because they're gonna be doing things really crazy when they're deep stacks that are not gonna give them value uh what's this guy's open small blind it's 14 we're just gonna give it to you man I love the way that tournaments have an end to them, you know? There's like a winner, I really like that. Uh, cooling with King Queen here against this unknown guy is middle position. 
from the cutoff, definitely cool. Uh, this might be a bit tight, but I'm not really interested. Suited, we'd call that. Jill Helmuth. There was this guy called Bill Filmaf who was really, really funny. I don't know if you guys ever saw his videos. This guy in the small blind has been extremely active. He's been free bit by the big by the button. Not gonna overcomplicate this. Looks like a decent flop. Okay, uh, hmm. I'm gonna check again so that he, it looks like he's got jacks here to be honest. And he might want, he might want to bet for protection here. Okay, so now we've checked twice, I think we should go for it, I don't think there's too much value to be had. Let's bet small, make it look like we might have nines or something. Yeah, I would like to see what he, He's had if I can quickly load that up. Yeah, I've got a. For some reason, on the fast fold, it doesn't automatically tell you what they had. Uh, last week, I opened up Holder Manager to check because you can literally just quickly check it on there and it'll show you straight away. But um, it broke it last week. <laughs> so I don't really want it to break on the live stream again. Uh, D7s are definitely an open, however the button has been extremely active so I'm expecting him to free bet a lot so I've just reduced my opening size very small. We don't know, he might just be free betting people who open late position. We're not going to just fold it, but we'll just reduce it a little bit because we're expecting him to do something bad. See, 5-jack against this sort of guy is a bad move. He's going to be playing way too much. Playing back at us way too much, I should say. Oh, no one's guessed what my um, avatar is. Still, that game is still going on. Okay, so this guy has been free betting loads in the big blind. Dun, 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 dun. Got some blind. Go on, son. I think even though he's going to free bet a lot, this guy may call and we can overcall. So, he has free bet. If this guy calls, we're in. We're in, son. Good luck, us. We expected it. We're going for it. Oh, it's so close to a three. He's going to have a lot more bluffs here than usual because it looks like he's gone nuts, which is a bit annoying, but GG, man. Um, we're going to up our raise size a bit to take advantage of the small blind who looks like he's going to call us too often with bad hands. Usually be 2.5, we'll go for a three. We're not loving that. Uh, watch unfold. So, okay. He should not be doing this as a bluff very often because this guy looks like he's going to continue a lot. So we can be more confident in making a fold there. My favourite is the Devilfish. Yeah, he's a cool guy. He's got a really good autobiography get a chance to read that. Is it like swimming with the devil or something like that? Uh, I don't feel like there's much value raising that hand there. Uh, this player has been raising a lot. Sorry, re-raising a lot two steals, so we're just going to pass that hand. Okay, no 
that guy's going to be restealing a lot. If you're wondering why I'm drinking Dr Pepper so late, it's because there is no clean glasses in the flat. Actually, there probably is now because the dishwasher's done, isn't it? There is, yeah. Mm. Alright, so we've done a little bit of the 10NL. You know what? Let's jump into one of these real quick. Uh, it's not a licorice doily, no. <laughs> it does look like the right sort of colours for a licorice doily. <laughs> Did you ever have that uh, licorice thing with the um, the stick and then the sher sherbet fountain? Those are great. It looked like it looked like a stick of dynamite though. Something like Wiley e. Coyote would, you know, have in his Acme arsenal. We're gonna try and sneak this deal in. Uh, it's not from a video game, but it's something to do with a game. A board game. That's quite a big clue. It's to do with board games. That guy was folding way too much, so we just quickly nicked it with that suited queen. check to us, we're going to take a stab. Little jab. Yeah, it's pretty hard to see what it is actually. Hmm. We're going to go on for about 10 minutes or so. Ah, oh, this guy just wants us to stack him now by min raising. Where's he from? Canada, eh? Hmm. Got the old G shot. Sherbet dab, yeah. Um, he's min. All right, I'm terrified. I am terrified that he's min free but us and then he's checked to us. Please check again so we can get a free shot. <laughs> I got a feeling he does have the super nuts it. It was nice to get a free shot. It wasn't really the flop we were looking for. Sure, but dab is decent too, yeah. It's not from Final Fantasy, but that is not a board game either. Uh, we expect the big blind to have a lot of high cards in their cooling range, so I don't really want to bet this even though we have a pair.
Hopefully we can get this to go check check. Sixes. Uh, so what it is, my avatar, it's a... Let's see this. Oh, I've got a note on this guy. Wait a sec. Very small free bet. Ace four suited button from Minimary, whichever it is. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> so I need to take better notes. <laughs> um, so it's a dice with like 128 sides. So it's used in those really geeky games. This is a fold because this uh, big blind might squeeze and the pair is too weak. We want pocket eights or nines or something like that. Here. So we can defend a bit more on the flop. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a dice. So when you roll it, uh, you get a certain amount of options, shall we say. Uh, I think it's used in games like Dungeons and Dragons where you roll it and if it's between like 0 and 50, it means you hit them and if it's between uh, 50 and 90 it means you hit them twice as hard and then if it's like between 90 and 100 you kill them or something like that I never played it I think it's Warhammer uses things like that as well I don't really know what it is the reason it's my avatar is because that's a bit like how I feel like I never really know exactly what this guy's gonna defend too much to still what I'm gonna be doing at the poker table, so it's a bit like I'm rolling a 128 sided dice in my head <laughs> uh, to decide what to do. But it's not random, you know, it's, it's got, it's weighted, it's weighted to the right decisions. Holy flop, I like that name. Yes, the straight flush was potentially coming there. Wow, that guy had a big stack. He had like over 100. If we had King-10 suited here, I'd like to overcall to let in this guy. I don't really think King-9 is good enough, and I don't really think it's good enough to free bet. We can free bet uh, slightly better hands than that. Yeah, I think Dungeons & Dragons uses things like those dices. I'm not totally sure. Oh, that's the washing machine done. <laughs> I, I think it's more Warhammer, yeah. Oh, Toby got it, so does Toby play those games? Does he know? I think they come with like 60 sided die, but this is like a hundred, this is like a mega dice. I think if someone bought me one, I could like bring it as my card protector at poker as well, yeah. Ah. Uh, let me just show you that software that you use to recreate poker hands, because it's really cool, you can send me them um, you can send me them with, if you want me to go through a live hand as well, if you don't want to record like a whole online session. So it was, um, live poker hand replayer, was it? Recreate poker hand, poker hand replays, this is it. So yeah. I'll just give you a little go of how it works, it's pretty cool. Uh, it also saves them as well, so say if I want to title 2-5, uh, Friday night, or whatever, something like that. So number of players, say there was like 6 players in the game, it's going to be dollars but it's 
pounds, really. Oh, right, for some reason there's no five. All right, two, four. <laughs> we can do two, four. So click on the painting to the painting. So let's put us here. Joey C. Poker. And select our whole cards. So two, two. And then let's select their whole cards. So uh, I'll leave the stacks as 400. So this is a hand that happened on 2-5 the other day. Uh, I was actually on the button in this hand, but I, I'm literally just showing you how the software works. So it puts the blinds in and then you just like complete what it is they did. So you say he raised and then say, I'll just pretend it's 3x because that's what he made it. 12, boom. And then I called with deuces and then someone else called here. Actually, no, this guy folded, this guy folded, this guy called, bang, and this guy folded. And then you choose the cards on the flop. So, say, it's like a deuce, then, and king, and then check. And he would bet 25. I should have given 30. And then I'm like, raise. See, it's, it's really easy to recreate this. Okay, and then finish. So if you uh, if you save, sorry, if you sign into this site, it actually shows you, or sorry, saves the hand for you as well. So what I've done, just see what's happening on here. So what I what I've done is I've just moved into this new game this was the first hand on a 2-5 uh seat 5 was on my 1-2 game earlier at the casino and i'd literally just seen him shove in from with 2-4 suited for 100 big blinds pre-flop against a guy who just sat down at the table so i knew this guy was absolutely nuts and i mean you've seen the hand recreated but um <laughs> uh Basically, I hit a flop where I actually felt sorry for the guy. I was like, it's his first time playing. He's probably got ace-king, and he's going to be stacking off here. I was so happy when it uh, re-shipped me on the flop. Usually, I'd only raise to like 90 or something here because I don't want to scare him off, but then he just ships in, obviously. He snap call in, and then he goes to me, oh, no, you don't have pocket kings, do you? And I'm just like, oh, oh, man. <laughs> Don't tell me you got the tens, yeah. And then you made quads on the river anyway. But yeah, it's decent uh, to show this hand recreation. And I think you can just send me the links once this is saved on there too. Because it's a good way of looking at it as well. Am I playing this from my prison cell? Anyone I give no... Anyone who decides to gamble for a living who doesn't know how to make money in real life has no skills or talents and contributes nothing to society and has no education like this loser. 
And how are you watching this from your prison cell? Ah, you, yeah. you, you were late to the party. We had, we had loads of um, interesting things to talk about today. Uh, actually, I do try and contribute to society too. Um, I try and give away, uh, this is a thing called Reg Charity, where I give away a certain amount of uh, profits of winnings. Uh, you know, t to help people. I think most of it's done to uh, bring water to people in countries where they're having trouble with it. But also, it's meant to be entertainment, it's meant to be fun, and if people come to play, then I make sure they have a great time playing with me and make sure everyone's having fun at the table. Uh, I tell you what, Woodsuck is doing a job that you don't want to do going home and being feeling sad about it every day uh, so if you want to do something you should go for it and see what you can do with your life as long as you're happy with what you're doing you shouldn't care I mean I, I don't care what others think I do like to <laughs> try and make people have fun when they play with me and you should only play poker if you think it's fun anyway so yeah I mean I'm, I'm I'm a bit ups upset you feel that way, but maybe poker isn't for you, man. Why are you watching I mean, the stream, man? Yeah, I don't know, I don't know why you're watching the stream, the stream anyway. Uh, watch, like, PewDiePie but... or something instead, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, maybe there's a Dungeons & Dragons stream for you that also <laughs> contributes nothing to society. Um, what do you do with your spare time? <laughs> um, so... Yeah, there's been quite a few different things to go through this week. Uh, please send me your your hand histories or your videos, that'd be brilliant. 20, 25 minutes is like the perfect time for you to, um, for you guys to uh, send in for me to go through. Because it takes, I mean, a 20 minute video probably gives us like about an hour of chat as well. So yeah. Thanks very much for watching the stream guys and looking forward to next week. There's some uh, live tournaments being played. Uh, so they're going to be uh, shown on the Barty Poker channel next week. Um, but the, the usual suspects will be around on the days that they're not doing the live streams. Alright, so have a really great Tuesday night everyone. and. I